Hello everybody, it's Mo on the go with another show. And we're here with Popo, Pauline. Hi Pauline, welcome Hi, to the Pauline. show. Hi. <laughs> Today we're whistling along, eh? Because even if we have problems, you know, we're still going to be happy. We're not going to be worrying too much, are we? Hmm. Here's a little song I wrote. Here's a little song I wrote. Might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. <laughs> be happy. Because in every life, every life we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, guys. Be happy. All right, so don't worry about your education. I know a lot of you guys are going through, you know, the process of moving between the high school and college and trying to figure out, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, am I going to go to college? Am I going to go to, you know, university? Or am I just going to go into informal employment? Should I go into business? What am I going to do? It's a really daunting time at that time because, you know, you're a teenager most likely or just moving from your teenage to young adults. It's a very difficult transition. Really, and your thoughts are all over. You your thoughts know. are all over, yeah, like Pauline you need, is saying. You need some guidance from somebody who has gone through this. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. so basically the thing is, when I was, I remember when I was like 18 years old, I was like finished with university and I was wondering to myself, what am I going to do with myself? How am I going to, you know, continue with education to pursue the things that I like to do mm. and not put my parents under such pressure it was yeah. really difficult mm. at the same time you know my parents wanted to give me more than they already had themselves mm -hmm. you know typical parents that's how they are they're like you know I want you to have the best I'm gonna do the best for my child Actually. so they go out of their way to sacrifice yes, isn't really, it yeah. yeah so how did you do it <laughs> So fortunately for me, I came from a family where my father was already educated abroad through government scholarships. In those days, they used to have government scholarships. Mm -hmm. So fortunately for him, he went abroad to school. And abroad means even next door to Uganda yeah. and abroad to the UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was kind of like understanding when I told him that I wanted to go to school abroad. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, you know, going abroad was the in thing, you know? Sure, I can't imagine. <laughs> and getting a university admission, those mm -hmm. days were not very many universities. Mm -hmm. Recently, I had to send my son to university abroad. And I also went through the daunting task of trying to identify proper universities for him. But what happened in this particular case, he had a friend who was abroad, already in university, who called him. Who let him know, hey, you know, you can come here. So it became a little bit easier for us in terms of even identifying accommodation and things like that. Because he had a friend. And that's one of the ways you can do it. Do you have a friend abroad? who's in a university, a who can invite you, mm -hmm. yeah, who's a fam or a family that mm -hmm. you can go and stay with, because mm -hmm. that will really cut your costs. So my son didn't have a family to stay with, but at least he had a friend. And because of that, there was a motivation. Mm -hmm. And now for me, I had to push myself. Ooh, I really had world. to push. To the world. <laughs> to <stop. laughs> to finance I was kid. sweating beads <laughs> when I look at the cost of education. And I you are even getting like, older now. <laughs> I'm getting older, it's getting tougher, it's mm -hmm. getting, oh my god, I was like, oh god, but you know, I had to put on the straight face, like, yeah, you're going to do it, because I did it, you're going to do it, mm -hmm. if my parents could put me through university abroad, why can't I do it, you know, it was really difficult, you know, mm -hmm. but in the end, I managed, and you know, you work harder, you find yourself pushing yourself harder as a parent, mm -hmm. to try to look for this money, mm -hmm. you know, you look harder, you work harder, you talk to your clients, you tell them, oh, I really need this job, and they actually listen to you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but as a student who wants to go abroad, yeah, the first thing to do is look online and see what course you want to study. Yeah, what is it that you want to study? In fact, you should know within yourself what are your gifts and what can you study abroad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What is offered? Uh -huh. And then on, after that, then you start identifying the colleges that are ranked the best. And at this moment, I'm going to talk about going to school in America because that's where I went to school. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. and that's where I took my son to school. Why? Because I feel the American education system is a liberal a liberal arts college system that allows you to explore very many different fields when you're young and before you have to specialize as opposed to the UK where you basically they push you into specialization before you've had a chance to explore very many courses mm -hmm. that's one the second thing the second reason why I chose America is because of the opportunities to work okay and supplement your parents you know, fees, school okay. fees, your school fees. Mm -hmm. So I managed to work as a babysitter for my neighbors. I used to be the babysitter who used to, you know, uh, wait for the child, children to come on their school bus. And I'd get a bit of money, and that money I used for 
my my clothing mm, your upkeep my upkeep and my clothing okay. but i was lucky because i happened to stay with a family friend who gave me accommodation for two years mm. two whole years mm. so i didn't have to pay rent and i didn't have to pay all those things but i had to help my parents with school fees so i did that through that and you know in the u.s another good thing with it is that uh, you're allowed to work 20 hours a week if you go to university in america or college you're allowed to work 20 hours a week on campus really Yes, you are. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, yeah. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I chose America. And lucky for me, where I went to school, the, the guy who, you know, the family who I stayed with, the man was actually a professor at the university. And at the university was also the home of one of the biggest hospitals, the Mayo Clinics. Mint Clinic Hospital. So what that did is that it widened my options for working on campus. So I could work in the hospital. So I worked in the hospital every weekend. I worked in the nutri in nutrition mm -hmm. because I'm, I like nutrition. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I used to make oral feeding and tube feeding formulas mm -hmm. and take them up uh, into the various wards mm -hmm. uh, for people. Mm -hmm. And I earned enough money to supplement the income mm -hmm. that I was receiving from my parents because it was really difficult for them. I remember my father saying that he had to sell. Keeps reminding me. Do you know that you made me sell my piece of land in such and such a place? Mm -hmm. It's Work very very that. expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, do you have any questions, Pauline? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so far, I would like to know now. Um, yeah, now I've identified the university. Yes. Now, how am I going to? Well, what are the procedures from my country? Oh, well, I where see. do you start from? Okay, this is how you start. The mm. first thing is that university colleges and universities in America require you to show proficiency in language. English language is the mod, uh, is a medium of instruction, uh -huh. and therefore you, you have to take something called the TOEFL test. Uh -huh. And there are TOEFL learning centers in most countries in the world, uh -huh. and if not in your country, it could be in a, in one that is in a neighboring one, in a neighboring country. So you can probably do it these days on the internet. But in those days, we uh -huh. used to have to go and sit down in the center uh -huh. and take the test. Okay. So maybe they offer the test online. I'm not sure, but those days we take the test. It was very easy actually, you know. Uh -huh. Although me with my last name sounded a bit Chinese, you know. So they were. Confused. Confused. They were telling me, you need English as a second language, oh, Miss Wang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I did the TOEFL. It was very good. I passed it, you know, with flying colors. It was easy for me. Mm, really. Congratulations. Many people pass it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, our education system in Africa is really tough. So going to America to study is not that difficult because, you know, you'll, you'll pass very well. If you do well in Africa, mm. you'll do very well in America as well. So the other thing to do is to identify um, a college that is affordable for you. Okay, uh -huh. so there are different tiers of institutions in America. There are what you call the Ivy League colleges. You've heard about them, Akina, Harvard, Yale. Those ones are oh, damn expensive, like forty thousand dollars a year or more. Uh -huh. Very, very expensive. And you know, uh, undergraduate education is about four years, so you're looking at spending like one hundred and sixty thousand dollars before you're actually done with the university. Wow. The university I went to charged like half of that. Mm -hmm. It's what you call a federal college. You know, one of these state land grant universities. Mm -hmm. University of, University of, University oh. of California, University of Minnesota, University of Kansas, University of. Any university of is usually funded by the government of America in part, mm -hmm. subsidized. Mm -hmm. But anything you hear like, California State University. Now, those ones are state-funded universities, uh -huh. and they're only funded by the state, so they don't have that much money. Government uh, and federal-funded universities, like the one I went to, have additional money for research. So even because they have this additional money for research, it means that you also have opportunities to work in research on campus okay. as an assistant and yeah. make money. But if you go to state universities, yeah. opportunities for work also decrease. Oh, yeah, okay. but it's also a little bit cheaper sometimes. Oh. Sometimes it's a bit cheaper because it's a state university. And the other option is that you can decide to go to a two-year community college. Community colleges offer two-year associate degrees, diplomas, and certificates. Okay, And you can actually graduate from a community college into an actual college. If you cannot afford to, um, into an actual university. So the universities offer the degree programs, full degree programs, bachelor's, master's, PhD, some of them, yeah? And the community colleges only offer associate degrees and diplomas and certificates. So the idea is that some people, because they don't have the money to pay for university, they'll pay for, they'll get into a community college, okay? Mm -hmm. And the community college will usually 
be much cheaper, like much, much, much cheaper, even than a land grant university like the one I went to. So, mm -hmm. for example, a community college might cost you like five thousand dollars a year, oh, really? which is about five hundred thousand Kenya shillings, oh. or less, even up to three hundred to five hundred thousand Kenya shillings mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, a college like the one I went to will cost you over a million shillings a year. Mm -hmm. If you go to Ivy League, Akina Harvard, you're going to be paying like four million, five million shillings a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, the differences are huge. But the most important thing is to be able to graduate from, graduate yourself and make sure that your credits that you take mm -hmm. in community college can be absorbed into university because not all of them can. Yeah, ah, okay. yeah. So you have to check and see which universities work with which university, with which colleges. Ah, you know, okay, yeah. Okay. So and also the other thing with colleges is that they usually don't offer you opportunities to work on campus because there's usually none. There's usually very few opportunities. Yeah. Ah. So now when you're you're wondering to yourself now how will I ever be able to afford this? How you can try and see if you can apply for partial scholarships. Ah. You can try to see whether you can get a home stay with a family abroad. And they do have, on the website, they do have, like, organizations that can help you to find a home stay. Mm -hmm. And you stay in somebody's home and you become, like, one of them. And they may not charge you. Usually it's not done because they want money. Mm -hmm. Usually they want to learn about the culture, where you're coming from, for yeah, example. So there are, yeah, okay. there are organizations that can help you to identify, mm -hmm. you know, uh, places to stay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other way to cut back on your costs when you're going abroad mm -hmm. is uh, what? Is to, to find ways to work on campus like I, I mentioned before uh -huh. and another thing which is very important is uh -huh. before you go abroad how about trying to get a skill in your own country one uh -huh. of the skills which are valued in those countries where you know people like uh, Trump have changed you know and made it a bit easier uh -huh. you know there's been reforms uh -huh. so for example accountants finance but you have to have, if, in order to have a skill, it has to be at least two years long. Mm -hmm. It means you may have to delay your university education a little bit mm -hmm. to get that skill. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to enroll in a two-year nursing college here mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Or you want to enroll uh, for two years in finance, in accounting, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually get a job with a university that can, actually, that can sponsor you because you have that skill. Okay. Yeah. So you can go to school and you can be sponsored. Uh, the other option is actually to take your undergraduate degree here in the country and only go for your master's degree abroad, that's which will option. make it much easier, uh, much much cheaper, yeah. much 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 easier. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But and, be, yeah. Go on. And also to I think uh, the last option can can work out. It will make it less uh, headache. Uh, it will not have so much pressure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mm -hmm. cost can can come can, can, can come down. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. exactly. By the way, you know what? Mm -hmm. You don't have to pursue education abroad. Mm -hmm. There are lots and lots of university opportunities in this country and actually even within the continent of Africa. I'm soon going to be sharing with you some of these options uh, as we continue. So subscribe mm -hmm. and follow me to various universities in Africa mm -hmm. so that I can show you the options that you have also mm -hmm. within Africa. Thank you know, you so I also much. want to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? But apart from that, if you want to go to the established universities abroad, then you're thinking about America. Mm -hmm. um, America is one of the best places to go to school because after you go to school, you can apply for something called the H-1B mm -hmm. visa. The H-1B visa allows you to stay in America for six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, within that six-year period, one of uh, you can work for a company if you have a skill that is of importance. And now, they're giving preference to people who have graduated from universities in America. So if you're smart, you do your undergrad in your country, and then you do your master's there, and you can continue to live there if you want to live there. You know? But like I said, it doesn't mean that living abroad or going to school abroad is the best thing. But all I can say is that it worked for me, mm -hmm. it worked for my son, and you know him and he's doing well mm -hmm. and I'm also doing okay, I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you can still come back to your country and still contribute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But the idea is just you know, to take advantage of established systems of education, which you know, you know are really excellent abroad. That's very true, yeah. yeah. If you can afford it, why yeah. not? Do Any it? last question before we close off? Uh, I think I've absorbed most of the questions that I wanted to ask you right now. Okay. Let me think of some. <laughs> You think some more? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Polly doesn't have any more questions. I think I gave her a little bit of information overload. So click, like, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Ooh.